following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. We are going to give uh, the lecture related with uh, belief and uh, faith in order to understand our position related with the path of the self-realization, the path that all the other people call salvation, etc. First, we had to place ourselves in the right point in order to, to understand who we are. When we talk about ourselves, we always think that we are the physical body. We are so identified with the physical body that we feel that we are three-dimensional. But remember that the physical body is only a vehicle that the soul utilizes. The soul that we call consciousness. Consciousness, soul, essence is the same. In Latin, as we said in other lectures, we call it anima, and in uh, Greek, psyche. So we have to be familiar to these three, uh, I mean, to these uh, words, psyche, anima, soul, consciousness, essence, which are always pointing to the same element, the soul. That immortal spark, which is our own reality within this physical body. The consciousness needs to self-realize itself. What do we understand for self-realization? Self-realization is the developing of all the inner human capacities. And the soul is that element that has to develop all the inner capacities related with the being. That's why, that's why we call it a self-realization of the being. The being is not the consciousness. So we have to make a difference between the consciousness and the being. The being is the spirit. It is that that we call God within each one of us. To self-realize ourselves means to perform the religare another Latin word, religare, which means to reunite, 
the game. The word religare in English is religion. So religion comes from religare, to reunite. So what we want is to reunite the soul with the spirit. For that we have to understand that the essence, the soul, the spark, which is our own reality within the physical body, comes from the stars, the sixth dimension, the higher dimensions. Within the higher dimensions resides the spirit. The spirit, the being, is called also the monad, from the Greek word monas, which means unity. So each one of us has its own unity, its own monad. From that monad or spirit or being, a particular individual god The spark, the essence, the soul, the consciousness unfolds and is the one that enters into the physical body. That soul, that is spark, that in Zen Buddhism is called Buddhata, is that element that comes into this matter, into this physical world, in order to attain the self-realization of the being. So, this is why we call religare, to reunite, because in the beginning, the consciousness, the soul, was united with the spirit. In the beginning, the soul, the spark, the consciousness was one with the spirit but because this being this spirit has the mission of awakening and performing its own duty that's why the spirit sends the spark the consciousness into the world into the physical plane so now this soul has to fight, has to work, in order to reunite again with the spirit, in order to reunite itself with the spirit. That's why the word religion in the Latin language explained unto us. And this is what most of the searchers of the path of the self-realization are trying to perform, to reunite themselves as souls again with the being, with the spirit. This is the only reason why we are here in this world, this physical world, in order to attain that union. In Sanskrit, that union is called yug. And from that word comes the word yoga, union. So yoga, religion, self-realization of the being, is the same. In other organizations, they call it salvation. Salvation, of course, of the last of the matter. Because when the soul enters into the physical world, which is called also the wheel of samsara, which is a mechanical wheel related with many laws. In this mechanical wheel, we find the law of evolution and devolution. We find the law of karma, 
many laws in which their consciousness is submitted. If the consciousness, the soul, wants to reunite again to attain the religion with its own spirit, the consciousness needs to work very hard in order to be free from the laws of matter. And that's why the path of the self-realization of the being is also called salvation. Salvation of these laws. Because if the consciousness does not control, if the consciousness is not controlling the laws of matter of this physical world or inferior world, then that union is impossible. The laws of the cosmos, of nature, are within ourselves and act through ourselves. So then we have to understand that the self-realization of the being has been taught by many masters, many avatars or messengers for many centuries. Their teachings are always the same in different ways according to the customs, habits of each country of the people. And that's why we find in this physical world seven orthodox religions. And from these seven orthodox religions we find 5,000 sects. The seven orthodox religions are Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islamism, Taoism, and Zoroastrism, from Zoroastro, Zaratustra. So, the soul, the consciousness, has many ways, many doors, in order to find the way for the religare, for the religion, for the yoga. The problem, of course, is the, we call it the mystic mind that we have to control, that we have to utilize in our own service. The mystic mind is related with that that we call belief. Within each one of us, as you know, we have a sensual mind that we talk about in the other lectures. And we said that the sensual mind is that mind that the consciousness utilizes in order to face the physical world, the three-dimensional world. Each one of us has to have a job, has to endure and to face this society. The sensual mind is related with this three-dimensional world. We said that it's called sensual because it's related with the senses, with the five senses. Five physical senses are those windows through which the vibrations of light, sound, color, and heat enters into the brain. And the brain is a physical vehicle of the sensual mind. So the sensual mind is related just to this physical world. The sensual mind does not know anything about fourth dimension, fifth dimension, sixth dimension, seventh dimension. He cannot know because the sensual mind only receives information through the five senses. 
and with the five senses of this physical body, we only uh, perceive length, width, and height, the three dimensions of this physical world. Can we see the four dimension with the five senses? Can we perceive the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh? No. Impossible. That's why the sensual mind is related with a skepticism. When the intellectual person, which is related with the sensual mind, hears about spiritualism or any type of knowledge related with the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, seventh dimension, something beyond the physical world, they just don't care about it. They doubt, or they really don't put any interest, because for the sensual mind, the studies of esoterism or occultism, which is a secret knowledge, is something beyond its own capacities. But there is another mind that I am telling you which is a mystical mind and that is related with beliefs the mystical mind is that uh, mind that study the doctrine not the doctrine related with this physical world but the doctrine related with other dimensions because we need to know about that which is beyond death. We need to know about that that we call the being, the spirit, God. We need to know as information, but we have to understand that is not enough. obvious that also the mystical mind receives information knowledge through the five senses but the type of information that the mystical mind is receiving through the five senses is we say abstract and that is what we have to make the difference between the sensual mind and the mystical mind because what we receive through the sensual mind the intellectual mind is concrete for instance if we talk about the chair everybody can stand and touch that chair you know that it's concrete. You can, you can prove that that chair is in front of your eyes. You touch it. You sit on it. But the information that is in the mystical mind is abstract. You cannot stand and touch what we are talking about. We talk about God. Some of you stand and say, hey, can, can I see a piece of God in order to understand most of, more about we say well that's impossible because God is not concrete God is not related with a, with a sensual mind talk about the fourth dimension fifth dimension and then the sensual mind says well I want proof I want to see that that you are telling me this is impossible we cannot show to the sensual mind things from the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimension because the sensual mind only perceives things from the third dimension through the five senses. In order to show, for instance, to the sensual mind something from the higher dimensions, and then we will need to have higher powers in order to crystallize 
things from the other dimensions and to make it visible and tangible in front of your sensual mind through your five senses. But even though the sensual mind is very skeptical and the sensual mind will think this man is hypnotizing me. What I'm seeing is just an illusion. It's not true. So that's why we need to awake the consciousness. We need to awake that that we call faith. But faith is different. The mystical mind is not related with faith. And this is something that we have to understand and to comprehend. Because today people mistake, they mix belief with faith. They say, I have a lot of faith because I believe. That's wrong. Belief, I repeat, has nothing to do with faith, neither faith with belief. To believe is easy. It's just to hear about abstract knowledge. And then we believe or disbelieve in it. Because we can also reject things. But in the mystical mind, we have the beliefs. And these beliefs are related with the doctrine that we are following. But I repeat. The doctrine is always abstract. We call abstract that that we cannot prove with our five senses, but that we know because we have the information in ourselves, within the mystical mind. This is how we find that people believe in God very seriously. To believe in God is a matter of the mystical mind. Never believe it with faith. <coughs> faith is related with other mind. But unfortunately, that mind does not exist within each one of us. That mind has to be created. And in order to create that mind, we need the knowledge of alchemy. We are going just to point that internal mind. But we have to understand that we have to develop that mind. The internal mind is related with faith. And we have to make the difference between the mystical mind and internal mind. In order not to mistake, in order not to mix I mean, the two minds. But we had to make a study of the different beliefs. That we have, that we have within, in our mystical mind. In the mystical mind, not only we find uh, beliefs related with religions of the orthodox religion, but also other type of beliefs. Like, for instance, 
beliefs related with a sensual mind. They are interrelated like that that the man comes from the ape. There are in the sensual mind certain information about the origin of the physical body related with the ape. But in the mystical mind, it's a more information, abstract information. The famous missing link that they never found. If they are trying to find. And they are trying to prove that theory of the sensual mind. And there are many uh, scientists that believe that the man or the human being comes from the ape, even though it still is a theory. It's not proof that the human being comes from the ape. another uh, belief, for instance, related with the Marxism-Leninism. But they said that God does not exist. Of course, that is related with the sensual mind. Because they said that with the five senses we cannot prove the existence of God. So God does not exist. And because they see that the matter is the main element in this physical world, they said that <coughs> the origin of everything is the matter. That's why they call it this uh, doctrine, the materialistic doctrine, materialism. But it's also a belief. Because what they call matter is just forms of the matter. The matter itself without form exists. But can we see the matter without form with the five senses? Can we perceive the matter without form with the sensual mind? No. So here we find that the followers of uh, materialism that do not believe in God and only in the matter, they also have beliefs because they cannot see the matter without form, but they believe in the matter. But we have to state that the matter itself without form is that element that when takes form, is having the form of a physical body, of a tree, a chair, a world, a planet, a moon, a comet, etc. So the materialist people only see forms of the matter, but never the matter itself. Only the internal mind can see the matter itself or perceive the matter itself. Not even the mystical mind, because in the mystical mind, I repeat, we have only information, beliefs. For instance, the atom. Can say, well, the atom or the atomic science is related with the sensual mind. Yeah, they study the atom, but even though it's related also with the mystical mind, <laughs> because nobody can see an atom. Not even the most powerful microscope can show us a, an atom. So, when we talk about an atom, we have to state it from the mystical point of view. The atom exists, but nobody can see it. So it's an abstract element within the mystical mind. So you see that the mystical mind has, of course, 
many information that we cannot prove with the five senses. Many great avatars and messengers came in the past in order to show us the way to build, to awake the internal mind. When we talk about the internal mind, we have to state that mind in Sanskrit is manas. Manas is a word that originated the word in English, man. So when we talk about the man, we are talking about the manas, the mind. So from this point of view, we have to state that there are three types of men. But also we have to make the assertion that we are not talking about male. Because in many languages, they utilize the word man in order to point the male sex. But here we have to state that man is related with the mind. And uh, it doesn't matter if that mind is within a male body or a female body. So the sensual mind could be within the female body or male body. The mystical mind could be in a male or female body. And as well, the internal mind could be within the female or male body. So from this point of view, in this lecture, the word man is not pointing the male. It's pointing just the mind, the real self, the human being. So then we find the intellectual man related with the sensual mind. And then we find the mystical mind related with the mystical man. And the internal mind related with the internal man. In the world we find mystical man and sensual man and very seldom internal man. So, as I said, the great avatars or messengers were always internal men. Beings with full, fully awakened mind internal minds. The internal mind is a vehicle, is a body that we have to build. It's of a beautiful yellow color. This mind is not only related with the five senses of the physical body, but also is related with the senses related with the superlative consciousness, superlative consciousness of the being. The superlative consciousness of the being proceeds through seven senses. seven senses of the superlative consciousness of the being has been taught in many ways in Sanskrit for instance they talk about the seven chakras in Christianity in the book of Revelation in the beginning of the book they talk about the seven churches People that study the book of Revelation and that they don't have the internal mind but just the mystical mind, they think 
they believe that these seven churches are related with seven churches that at that time in the beginning of Christianity existed in the continent of Asia they ignore that those seven churches are related with senses that the internal man has fully developed and that through the seven senses the superlative consciousness of the being perceives things and phenomena from the fourth dimension which is time things and phenomena from the fifth dimension which is eternity beyond time and eternity we find the sixth dimension the causal world but behold here that all of this information that I am giving unto you is abstract is going directly into your mystical mind you just imagine beyond the sixth dimension is the seventh dimension in order to perceive to have an experience within the fourth fifth sixth seventh dimension of the universe we need to awake the seven senses the zero dimension the absolute heaven is that which is above the physical world heaven is the fourth dimension fifth dimension sixth dimension seventh dimension that is heaven for us below this physical world also we have the infra dimensions of nature and the cosmos can we perceive the infra dimensions of nature and the cosmos with the sensual mind no we only know that through the mystical mind as an information but if we develop the seven senses related with the superlative consciousness of the being and then we awake the internal mind and the internal mind can know directly the infra dimensions of nature in this very moment for instance with your sensual mind you are seeing this room the chairs everything and your sensual mind has the information of this room and the people around this room with the internal mind in the same way you will have the information concrete information tangible through your internal mind if you awake the seven superior senses of the superlative consciousness of the being then the infra dimensions as well will be something concrete for you but right now the infra dimensions of nature are called in Latin words infernus infernus in English is inferno hell within the mystical mind people have many symbols of hell or the infra dimensions the inferno Catholic Church for instance they believe that hell the inferno is full of fire the Buddhists in Tibet they believe that hell is full of eyes very cold the Islamic religion believe that hell is an island where all, where all the people are suffering so there are many flags which symbolize the infra dimensions of nature 
many different infernos. In India, the infra dimensions are called avicci, the avicci, the inferior world. So we have to understand that no matter what inferno we have in our head is just a symbol of the crude reality of the matter. It's just related with the mystical mind. But we don't have to mistake the path. We don't have to misplace ourselves in the way of the self-realization of the being. In these times of Kali Yuga, Kali is the dark age, Kali Yuga, the dark age, or the age of iron. People are very materialistic, very sensual. Some of the people in this humanity are very mystical. That's why we find followers of Buddhism, Islamism, Judaism, Christianity, Taoism, etc. But most of them are situated in the mystical mind. And uh, they are mistaking the path. They think because they have the information in their mystical mind about such of such abstract knowledge related with the doctrine of salvation, self-realization, religion, etc. They think that they are already done, ready to go into the higher level. So we have to understand that one thing is to have the information, the doctrine in the mystical mind, and another thing is to perform the work, to perform and to develop that we have to develop. It's not enough to have the information, but we need that information. We need the mystical mind because we need to put in ourselves that information which is abstract and to understand that and to believe in it before making it a fact for our consciousness. But it will be a big error, a very terrible mistake if we think but only with the information that we have, only with the doctrine, will be enough. In this very moment, come into my mind the words of Jesus of Nazareth. When he was teaching the doctrine, he said, Whosoever hear my words, you see, my words because always when somebody gives the doctrine this one has to talk as I am talking right now so Jesus was talking Krishna was talking and every all the great masters always talk the word goes into your ears so he said whosoever hears my words and does the word perform the work I will compare this person with an intelligent man that built his house on the rock so then he was building his house on the rock and he said then the winds came storms and blow against that house, but it didn't collapse, because its foundation was strong, was stone, rock. But whosoever hears my words 
and does not perform the work. I will compare with the foolish man that built his house on sand. And then, whence came the storms and other forces of nature and uh, crashed because its foundation was not as strong, was just on sand. Many people in these times with a lot of information in their heads But they think that their, their house is strong. Meanwhile, you see how the mystical mind changes its vesture like the fashion of women that changes many times. We are Catholics believing in some type of way and somebody knocks at the door. He's a Jehovah Witness. And this Jehovah Witness, with a lot of information in his head, related with the mystical mind as well, changes the fashion of that soul, which is in the mystical mind. And there the person moves his house, destroys that house, and builds another house in sand, on sand. And then that's how we find different type of believers that change from one belief to the other belief like I repeat changing fashion right? according to the epoch and they believe that they are saved because now they have in their mystical mind another type of information meanwhile it's still abstract they do not know anything about but they think that they know so to enter really into the faith is to build the house on a rock the rock is faith but faith is something that you perceive something concrete something that is in your consciousness as a fact not abstract in the mystical mind it is good there are many people in the mystical mind that believe in God. But it is not enough. The real initiate that has an experience of that that the people call in the mystical mind God, they no longer need to believe in God. They have faith in God. Because they experience that that the people call God true and that has very uh, different names the mystical mind uh, uh, people call God Jehovah Allah Yeshua Jesus Henry Brahma Buddha etc but that one that has built his house on the rock, this one knows really the name of God within. He or she had experience of God within. To have experience, to perceive God with the consciousness is something related with the internal mind, with the superlative consciousness. It has nothing to do with the sensual mind, neither with the mystical mind. That's why when a person asks to someone with an internal mind, do you believe in something? 
then the person with internal mind says, I don't believe that. But that doesn't mean that the person is denying that. If somebody asks me, for instance, do you believe in God? I will say, no, I don't believe in God. But I am not denying God. Because thanks to this knowledge, to this doctrine that I practice, I experience what God is. So then it's faith. That's why Jesus, the Lord, the Christ, the great master Jesus said, you have to have faith as a mustard seed. And then you will, mo- you will move mountains. So, a single experience with the size of a mustard seed is enough to experience that which is God. And then you no longer need of the mystical mind. Because that experience is within your superlative consciousness. And then that information in you is concrete. It's a fact. Not a sensual fact, not a physical fact, but it's a fact within, a cognition that you had with your consciousness, that you work with it. And that is faith. But people mistake faith with belief. They said, I believe and then I have faith. We can call it Blind faith, maybe. Blind faith is belief, in other words. Because it's believing in something that you don't see. And this is something that we have to understand, but because in the doctrine uh, we find that the Master says, Blessed are those that uh, believe without seeing. And those ones are ourselves. Because if we believe in the doctrine, and we believe in the path of self-realization, we are blessed. Because we are going to perform the work. First, we have to believe without seeing. It's obvious that is that the point. Because if you don't believe, how you are you going to do the work? That is why the great master Paracelsus explained that first we have to study the doctrine, then to practice it. But many people, they study the doctrine, and they study the doctrine in the wrong way, and they never practice it. Moses came, and he gave the doctrine. People are studying his doctrine, but it's very rare to find someone that is practicing his doctrine. Jesus came and taught his doctrine, but it's very rare to find someone practicing his doctrine. It's not enough to believe what we are reading. We have to perform what we are reading. It's not enough to read and know about the word. <coughs> we have to perform the word. See all of the sects related with Christianity. The fact that they don't, do not have faith is obvious. Because if they have faith, if they experience what Jesus taught in the Gospels, then It will be only one religion, only one sect. But there are many sects. Because if we talk here, for instance, about the chair, if I tell you this chair is with bamboo, yellow, a green cushion, everybody agrees, right? 
or you are seeing a red cushion there or the chair is metal chair you know that it's bamboo chair right but if I tell you that is another chair here that you cannot see in the fourth dimension it's a red chair you can believe or not believe and those that believe when said, well, but I think that that chair is not of bamboo, is metal. And then a bunch of people will follow that person that is saying that is metal chair. And the other one that is bamboo. So we have two sects. So in the same way we have Christianity. They are studying the Gospels and they interpret the Gospels according to their mystical mind in some way. And then we have the Presbyterians. But then another, or another group says, no, what they believe is not right. We have the truth. We know how to interpret the Gospels. And then we have the Jehovah Witnesses. No, they said, but according to Jose Smith, or Joseph Smith, right, and the Book of the Mormon, we had the moment. Now that we have to follow the Pope because according to the tradition, Peter was the first and they have to be always someone that guides all, all the, the believers. Then we have the Catholics. But we do not accept the Pope because we know that uh, everyone can work without having a, a, a leader. And we do not accept the uh, leadership of Rome. But the Orthodox and Greeks, and like, like that, likewise, many sects. And with one versicle of the Bible, you can make a sect. You can name it where, uh, in the, in, according to your own taste. And the same thing that happened with Christianity happened with Buddhism and also with Judaism, Hinduism, and all of the sects of the seven orthodox religions that we find in the world. That's why we said there are 5,000 sects. And because they do not experience, they don't have faith, only believe. That's why they fight against each other saying that you are wrong, I am right. This is the way. You are worshipping the devil, I am worshipping God. Because I believe in this, and you don't believe in that. So then, really, the mystical mind, as you see, has like many sense. moving the building and that's why you find a lot of confusion among believers we don't have to fall into confusion we have to understand that to study the doctrine whether it is Christianity Judaism or Buddhism or Taoism Hinduism. It's good. Because all of them are always pointing the same religion, the same union, which is God. But we have to study from the esoteric point of view. With a Kabbalistic point of view. In order not to commit a mistake. Because a blind man that guides blind men all of them will fall into the hall. So we need, of course, someone that is working and seeing. And for that we have, of course, to understand the basis in order to develop the internal mind, in order to awake the consciousness. It's not a matter of following somebody we have to follow our inner spirit, our inner being. 
But how are we going to follow our inner being, our inner spirit? If we keep building our house on sand, There are other type of believers in this type of Kali Yuga, which is called the Kalkian personality. Kalkian, from the Sanskrit Kali, dark age, or iron age. Kalkian personality. This Kalkian personality characterizes him or herself because it's a studying a mixture of all the doctrines. It knows about Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, but never has a proof of it. A lot of information without having a direct experience. Only those that know the secret of Tantrism or Alchemy are the ones that develop the seven superior senses. And then they enter into the internal mind. But the Kalkian personality talks about the seven chakras the seven basic dimensions, talks about the great masters of the brotherhood, Kutumi, Moria, Saint Germain, and many other great masters that are abstract to the mystical mind. But they talk about the internal brotherhood as they were seeing them. And they were talking with them. Some of these Kalkian personalities, they suffer in secret. Because they talk about higher dimensions, but they never had an experience in the higher dimensions at all. They talk about, for instance, the seven bodies of the human being. But they never had an experience with them. Astral projection? Beautiful. But they never had an astral projection. They talk about aliens. People from other planets. But they, ne they never had experience with other people from other planets. Between parentheses, in Mexico, I met people that were faking to be people of other planets. They were, of course, there saying that they were from Mars, and meanwhile, they were just from Venezuela. But people from Mexico didn't know that they were from, were from Venezuela. <laughs> and likewise, there are many people there that say, I'm going to introduce them to you, uh, people from, from Venus, you know. I, uh, and meanwhile, it's just somebody from Ireland that is just cheating people. To really know a master or a people from other planets, you need to awake the seven internal senses to have a direct experience, then you meet them. With the internal mind is easy. And then you do not make, make the mistake because in this physical world, with your five senses, if you don't have at least, at least the clairvoyance in order to see if in reality the physical body that is in front of you is from this planet or from other planets, because sometimes you can even find an extraterrestrial in front of you and you don't know that it's an extraterrestrial. Because in order to, to prove that, you have to have clairvoyance. With the five senses, you see only bones and flesh and a, hairy, a, a very hairy head 
on their shoulders. But that doesn't prove that it's from other space, I mean, from other planet. <laughs> so then, we have to comprehend and to understand that the Kalkian personality is the most uh, deviated personality among others. Because they think that they are already done. Because they listen this type of seminar. Because they read those hundred books related with this topic. And they just waste their time from one flower to the other flower, like the butterfly, visiting the different flowers. And never experience directly they are not serious we have to be serious if we want the really got it if we want the self-realization of the being we have to be serious not with me with yourselves that seriousness is towards your being because if we are receiving information if we are reading books and having a lot of knowledge related with the abstract dimensions beyond our five senses, it's good. But if we do not experience, if we do not open the internal mind, if we do not develop the internal senses, we are just cheating ourselves. And the worst of the cheats is when you cheat yourself, Because with your sensual mind, I mean with your mystical mind, you believe that you are okay. Oh, I am doing well. Meanwhile, you are just as when you didn't know anything about it. If you uh, examine your psyche, for instance, before you were studying this type of knowledge, if you examine your behavior, your habits and customs, if you are behaving in the same way as when you didn't know anything about this knowledge and that you are just cheating yourself. We have to change. And that change is not just information in the head. That change is to awake to the unknown, to see, to touch the things of the fourth, fifth, six, seven dimension, and for that we need the tools, the keys, the codes, in order to awake the internal senses, in order to put the consciousness in contact with our being. Then we will walk with certainty, with faith, not with doubts. The one that awakes faith we never leave the path. We'll always walk ahead because it's something that is experiencing. It's like the person that touched the fire and gets burned. It's faith. So we have to then to understand that faith is something that you experience something that you perceive through your five senses and through the seven superior senses. In total, twelve senses. So the twelve senses are related with the internal mind. Five physical senses and seven internal senses. But only the five senses by themselves are related to the sensual mind. And the mystical mind has nothing to do with any sense to prove. Cannot prove even with the five senses what they believe. Do you have questions? 
said the mystical mind receives through the five senses in an abstract way. Yeah. If I modify that to read, receives through the five senses and processes that information in an abstract way, is that the same thing? Yeah, of course. It processes in the abstract way as well. Because when that abstract knowledge or information becomes a fact to your consciousness, it does not longer belongs to your mystical mind, it belongs to your internal mind. So in the beginning, for instance, the believer believes in God. But then when that uh, belief is experienced with the superlative consciousness of the being, and then that information no longer belongs to the mystical mind, but to the internal mind. And that is faith. And then you know that God, what God is, We are here in order to perform what we have to perform. And in, in order to perform that, we have to reunite again through the experience and to the knowledge. When the consciousness is with God, that consciousness cannot know anything because it is within God, because God is everything. If that consciousness wants to know, and it has to leave, when reunites again, that consciousness has information, knowledge, experience. That is called self-realization. That's why God, the being, the spirit, needs to know itself. <coughs> but in order to know itself, within itself, is impossible. It needs to project the consciousness into the universe in order for that consciousness to return. And in the returning, that consciousness is knowing himself or itself. And that is the religion or the religion to reunite again. If we perform the religion, of course, God will know through ourselves its own reality. Or we will know about our own reality, in other words, our own being. That which is the spirit does not know itself. He needs to awaken to know, as in Brahmanism or Hinduism they say, Brahma is sleeping, and Brahma needs to awake. And in order to awake, the consciousness needs to work. And when the consciousness is awake, and then we have absolute consciousness of the being, the consciousness is built. There is a work of the consciousness and also the work of the being. You have to realize that. It's just not the work of ourselves as souls. It's also the work of the being. The being works and we work here. He works above, we, we work below. Both elements or parts are parts of one thing, the monad. The soul below, the spirit above. And when they are reunited, really got it, the self-realization is done. They are awakened. But we have to do the effort. That's why we have to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but, for, but deliver us from evil. Because thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever and ever. That is the soul praying to the being, to the spirit, to our own particular individual God. Because God is individual in each one of us. The drop of the great ocean, when that drop enters again into the great ocean, is the ocean. That is what we call the multiple perfect unity. The unity is multiple and perfect. Multiple because it's in each one of us. And perfect because it is perfect. One in many. Remember Parsifal, the great opera of, Van, of Wagner. Parsifal didn't perform the work in the beginning. He didn't get the grail because he didn't ask. He was just there. And then he had to do the work again the second time, and then he did it. No. But the ego can awake. The consciousness can awake if it's free from the ego. But there are people that awake with the ego. But because the ego belongs to the infra dimensions of nature, those people awake in the evil and from the evil, in the infra dimension. And those people are called demons or black magicians. And they are awakened with the ego, but the, in the infra dimension. When we awake consciousness, we have to annihilate the ego. Well, uh, we have to understand that when the soul penetrates into the matter, which is the physical matter, the soul is entangled in that that we call karma. And the karma is related with the laws of nature or the planet in which we are. So then we have, in order, in, in order to go into another planet and to have another experience, to develop ourselves in, in another planet, we have to first to annihilate the karma that we have here. It's not possible to go to another planet like other people believe, because that is the belief in the mystical mind. They think that we are going to perform certain uh, work here and on the earth, and then eventually we will go to other planets. Just like that, mechanically, without doing anything. We say, if we want to go to other planets, first we have to annihilate the karma that we have here. Because karma is the debt that we have. The soul is entangled in this love we don't command or control this law, how are we going to go into a superior law? We are living in this planet Earth. doesn't mean that we are in prison. Right? We can go, if we have, for instance, internal bodies, we can go to other planets. I, myself, have been experiences out of this planet. But uh, if I want to live for good with all of my soul and my being to other planets at first I have to pay what I owe here otherwise it is not possible and I owe a lot karma karma is cause and effect according to the law of karma is related with the reincarnation or return we are for instance in this life 
vain what we did in other lives. But we have not only two lives. According to Buddhism, we have 108 lives. And in more than 100 lives, you made a lot of mistakes. And that's why we return, or we reincarnate again, in order to pay what we owe. That's why many people are being born in physical bodies that belong to rich families, other to poor families. Other people that, that those physical bodies are being born in the Ethiopia. And they're starving to death. Why are they, those souls uh, reincarnating there? They have to pay what they owe. So that is karma. So when you discover how much you owe in this physical world, your soul, of course, related with the physical world, when you awake your consciousness, and then you discover that you did a lot of evil deeds in your past lives, and that you had to pay that. The karma that we have is because our ignorance. Different ways that we behave in the past, or the soul behave, because of ignorance. Because the worst of the sin is ignorance. When we are ignorant of the law, and then we commit a lot of mistakes. But when we know the law, and then we know. There is a cosmic love that we ignore. But if we awake the consciousness, we will know about it. First, we have received the information in the mystical mind about those laws. And we know directly, and then we have to know how to deal with them. And then we will free ourselves from this mechanical life in which we are. To be here and now, of course, is to be awake, to work with the consciousness. Because when we are identified with the sensual mind, or with the mystical mind, we are out of ourselves. Usually we are always out of ourselves. So we have to remember God. We have to remember the spirit. And that's why the great masters or avatars, messengers, they brought unto us many great prayers. In order to pull the force and to, to attract the force of God into our soul. Many mantras. But we have to do it or to perform those or to work with those uh, practices consciously. We have to feel ourselves always within the body. Do not forget that you are here in this room. When you are walking, do not forget that you are walking. If you are eating, do not forget that you are eating. Because usually the consciousness is not there always when we are performing things. If we are listening in this lecture, we have to listen to the lecture to be here. But we are with the consciousness, for instance, you are here because the consciousness is like the light of a lantern. Lantern. You project that light to many ways. So the light of our consciousness right now could be, for instance, in the supermarket, could be in our home, or in Noah's Ark, could be anywhere, right? But we don't have to project that light, that consciousness, out. We have to be here. We have to illuminate the bulb which is a physical body. The physical body is the ball. Let that consciousness shine always 
in the physical body. No matter where this physical body will be, if it's here, let it illuminate this place. But sometimes we see the person, physically speaking, as a bulb, and there is no light there, because the light is in Noah's Ark, who is uh, there at uh, the park, you know, in um, another place, a supermarket, uh, a restaurant, with my boyfriend, with my girlfriend, right? With my mind, my dad, my, my brothers, my friends, etc. So where is the consciousness? So to put in activity the inner senses, first, we have to illuminate ourselves. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Glorian Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah,